Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be chatting about new fragrance releases for this past week. We have everything from designer, niche, and tons in between. So if you're interested, definitely stick around. If you're new on this channel, hello, my name is Anya. I do videos like these on fragrance news every single Monday, and I also do additional videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, along with a ton of bonus content in between. So if you're interested, definitely do consider subscribing. Uh, there is a pretty good lineup this week, so I'm just going to get right on into it. It. There's some releases that I think are really, really cool for the summertime, and I'm interested to see what you have to say about these. First up is one of the cutest releases I think I've seen in a while. This is from Christian Louboutin. This is Louby Du Rose and Saint. And Saint? Am I pronouncing this correctly? I don't know. But this is going to be a limited edition fragrance from Christian Louboutin, and this is going to be a perfume that spotlights the note of rose, but also plays around with rose combined with incense. So we have a top note of incense, then we also have Centrifolia Rose in the mid, and we have a base of Australian sandalwood. They're really focusing this uh, launch on the rose note, like I said, the Centrifolia Rose, but this is a rose that is grown in Grasse in France. So so in terms of the marketing, they are really spotlighting that rose note. I can't say I'm super familiar with the Louboutin fragrances, however, I will say that in terms of bottle design and general aesthetics, I think Louboutin is one of the most inventive, especially when it comes to the niche space. They really take it to the next level and they make their bottles look super super interesting. Uh, they play around with that red a lot, with the, the signature Louboutin red, but what I like about this is that it's cute, it's fun, it's uh, obviously playing around with a cat and a lipstick. I think it's a really cool bottle design. Is this something I would theoretically be interested in? Probably not, because it is limited edition, and Louboutin is not a fragrance brand that I buy really because i mean i think the price point is a little bit up there for me personally but i do think this is a really fun release and if you are so inclined this is a would be a fun fragrance to try especially if you're interested in rose and incense i do think this is a really really cool release another noteworthy release is by amwaj this is going to be guidance 46 for women it's an elixir version of the iconic Guidance perfume and this will have notes of pear, frankincense, hazelnuts, rose water, pink pepper, and bitter almond at the top. Then a heart of saffron, rose, sambac, jasmine, osmanthus, and then a base of cistus, sandalwood, uh, akigala wood, ambergris, vanilla, ambrette, georgi wood, and cypriol. Clearly I can't pronounce all of these fragrance notes whatsoever, but this is an interesting release because Guidance is so popular, because Guidance is kind of renowned for being strong anyway. I find it intriguing that they're coming out with a fragrance that's supposed to be an elixir version of a perfume that's already super strong. I don't own Guidance, but I have smelled it many times, and it's one of those unique fragrances that you can instantly identify what it is. If you smell it on someone, if you smell it in the air, it's very it's very easy to remember this perfume. And it's a strong fragrance. I have smelled it on other people walking past me outside on a crowded street. And the fact that they're creating an elixir is definitely is intriguing. Um I don't I I, I don't know how this will end up. I don't know if it's just like a marketing thing. It maybe won't be that much stronger, but if you've smelled Guidance, let me know if you think the same. I think Guidance is already so strong, and yes, it's one of the most popular fragrances out there, so them coming out with like a flanker of it is not surprising, but also the fact that this is marketing, mar being marketed as an elixir version makes me chuckle a little bit because this is going to be a powerhouse. Okay, a new fragrance by Dies and Durga. This is going to be called Let's Dive, and it's marketed for women and men. This will have top notes of marine water and seaweed extract, a heart of big whale energy, woolly rock rose, and then a base of Shoyanak Accord and synthesized ambergris. I have a few thoughts about this. Um, the Yes and Durga did release, I think it was like Cowgirl Grass or something last week. We talked about this on the channel 
And I have pretty much a similar thing to say last week as I do this week. Well, maybe not. Dia Sindurga is a higher end brand in terms of pricing. They're not super up there, but they're definitely up there. You have to like consider, um, you have to kind of like weigh your options before buying a fragrance like Dia Sindurga because of the price point. Them coming out with fragrances that just seem like very, I don't want to say, well, kind of playful, but like pushing the envelope on playful a little bit. It's kind of giving, it's giving fast fashion at an inappropriate price point. They're talking about collaborating with a marine biologist who works closely with sharks and sperm whales because they want to capture the scent of diving with whales um, in Dominica, where they will usually be. And it's an oceanic interpretation of ambergris, so I see where they're trying to go with this conceptually, but when you're pushing the envelope so much when it comes to concept, you're, I think your consumer base is going to be very small. And the more I see releases from Dia Sindurga like this, I'm kind of wondering, do they even make like a, a large amount of these fragrances that like that they're launching? Or do they just have a small amount and they're just relying on the curiosity factor to kind of keep their brand relevant? Do you kind of get what I mean? I'm just confused by this. I don't know. I, I This is not something that I would find appealing. And I'm curious about like what they're trying to accomplish in terms of like who are they trying to target with a fragrance like this? Are you trying to go for the high-end customer? Are you trying to go for the fragrance enthusiast? And the fragrance enthusiast that would be interested in buying something like this, I think, I, I can't imagine a lot of people would be willing to fork over how much they're charging for this. It's just, I, I'm just confused by it. Uh, personally. Next up, I have a new release by Montal. This is Rendezvous Chez Herod's. This is a uh, limited edition fragrance, uh, an exclusive fragrance with Herod's, and this is going to have top notes of sparkling bergamot, Cambodian oud, Indian saffron, and Brazilian pink pepper, a heart of black leather, Indonesian patchouli leaves, and Moroccan rose, and then a base of intense amber, Brazilian tonka, Sweet caramel, rich oak moss, central white musk, and sandalwood. Um, this sounds really cool, like in terms of like the scent pyramid, it sounds really interesting. However, here's my thing about Montal. Montal fragrances, I don't I think I might be like one of the few people that think like this, but I'm not a fan of like their scents. Most of what I've smelled from them just I consider a little bit too abrasive. So I'm not I'm not biting at the bit to get my nose on this fragrance. Even though, I mean, I probably would try it if I had the opportunity to, to sample it in store. Um, but uh, I'm just not like a huge fan of Montal's brand DNA. But if you are, this might be something you're interested in. It's, I mean, it's a cool bottle. Uh, but I just, I've tried Montal fragrances before. I, I've tried to like them. I really have because everyone is so, so interested in Montal. But this is just not, I, I've come to the conclusion that it's just not a fragrance house that I'm interested in personally. It doesn't work for me. Next up is a fragrance that has a very interesting backstory. This is by Maison Crivelli, and this fragrance will be called Oud Cadenza. This is inspired by a party that Mr. Crivelli went to in Palm Grove, and it's supposed to contain aromas of oud, roasted cane sugar, cardamom, and cocoa, and it's coming on the 1st of July. So the top notes will include spicy cardamom, heart notes, cane sugar, and then we have, I believe, that cocoa and oud in the base. It seems fun. It seems like an interesting interpretation. I do love oud. I, I love oud and cocoa, and I, I would be open open to trying this one. So this, for me, is definitely a, a smash. Um, I think this will be a really cool fragrance, um, and I'm curious to see their interpretation on this. A new fragrance by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is called Divine Le Parfum. This is a fragrance that will be focusing very much on floral notes and amber. There are not a lot of other notes listed, so if you like the general DNA of the Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances, this might be one to try. There's not much to say about this fragrance. Um, it is cool. They're taking inspiration from their iconic corsetry, from their fashion line. So I would say if you're interested in, or if you like the Jean-Paul Gaultier DNA anyway, this might be one to try. I'm curious about this one. Um, I don't own anything from Jean-Paul Gaultier, but what I've, like, what I've sampled from them or what I've uh, smelled on other people from the brand seems to be pretty cool and good. So this is one that I would be potentially interested in trying out. 
Another fragrance that did pique my interest was by Louis Vuitton. This is called L-V-E-R-S and this is a fragrance that's for men. So essentially, Farrell Williams got named as the creative director for the men's division of Louis Vuitton fashion and they uh, are coming out with this fragrance that's inspired by his initial collection um, in June of 2023 and it's supposed to uh, uh, feature that pixelation pattern that apparently he's known for in his designs. I'm not super into men's fashion so I'm just giving you like the top level overview of this but essentially this perfume will have top notes of bergamot, heart notes of galbanum and then a base note of cedarwood and sandalwood. I think it's it's kind of cool to see a brand that's known for their fashion and also known for their fragrances kind of intertwine the two i think it's a really clever marketing strategy especially if you're trying to build hype or trying to legitimize essentially like a celebrity relationship because Pharrell williams is first and foremost a celebrity and the fact that he's named as a creative director is something that's quite new and novel it's not something that has been seen much before in the fashion world, if ever. So I do think this is a really clever marketing strategy, them creating that relationship between uh, the fashion house and the perfume house. The perfume house, which is already known for having a really dedicated fan base. A lot of people really love, especially the men's uh, Louis Vuitton scents, and them creating that, you know, collaboration synergy between the two. I think that's really clever. Is this something I'd be personally interested in? No because this is marketed towards men, and I mean, obviously I would try it out in stores, but I, can't, I don't think I would buy this, but I do think it's very clever, and I, I think it's a smash. And by the way, if you're new here, sometimes I like I say smash or I say pass, because when I initially started the series, I would say like smash or pass, like hot or not. So now I'm saying this is like more like fragrance news, but I still say smash or pass every now and then, so if you're wondering why I'm saying that, that's why. <laughs> uh, but let me see, next up. By the way, while I'm like waiting for my phone to load, I'm trying to experiment with the way I'm doing my microphone. Um, I've received a lot of feedback that my sound has not been the best and I'm trying to get better at it. I don't necessarily want to invest in like any kind of crazy mic setup as of yet, but I've switched around the way I'm doing my sound. So if you have any feedback, just let me know. Um, I am kind of still starting out with fragrance videos. I mean, I've been doing this on YouTube for a year, but I don't necessarily want to like make any crazy investments just yet because I'm still trying to get myself off the ground. But if you have any feedback for this slightly different interpretation of the sound or slightly different sound setup, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, the next fragrance is by Burberry. This is Goddess Intense. So they're pretty much known for their goddess fragrance. This is a flanker and this is going to be a... Uh, new vanilla woody perfume with notes of vanilla caviar, vanilla absolute, vanilla infusion, vanilla wood, and lavender essence. I would say this is a smash, it's a vanilla fragrance. Most people love vanilla and I would definitely be curious to trying this one out, especially since it's supposed to be a deeper and more intense version of their original Burberry Goddess. This next release I'm actually really excited about, and I can't say I have previously been excited by a lot of what this brand has to offer. I'm referring to Urban Outfitters, and when I saw this, I was kind of like, you know what? This is really fun. I definitely want to try some of these out. So they have released these boulangerie inspired perfume mists. So they have an entire collection of six fragrances, all inspired by French pastries. If you're a Garmand lover, listen up, because we have some really interesting fragrances here. Okay, so the first fragrance is going to be called Souffle Vanilla. Then we have Creme Caramel, Tarte au Citron, Fraise Merengue, Creme Brulettes, and Macaron Pistache. If we're going to break into the individual notes for each one of these perfumes, uh, Souffle Vanille has notes of vanilla, caramel, amber, rose, and pear. Then we have Creme Caramel, that's a little bit more balsamic, with notes of orange blossom, pink pepper, and clove at the top, a middle of chestnut, cade oil, and guyac wood, and then a base of Peru balsam, cashmere, and vanilla. We have Tarte au Citron. This is a woody, powdery fragrance with notes of violet leaves, bergamot, and cardamom at the top. A mid of cedarwood, vanilla, cipriol, orris, 
uh, Ambroxan Super, and then a base of Sandalwood, Amber, Musk, and Pear. We also have Fraise Merengue, which is a powdery floral with uh, notes of osmanthus, bergamot, and tea at the top, a mid of white flowers, freesia, orchid, and rose, and then a base of patchouli, vanilla, caramel, and musk. Next, Creme Brulettes is a soft, spicy, woody perfume with top notes of black currant, pink pepper, bergamot, a mid of jasmine tea and jasmine sambac, and then a base of gaia wood, cashmere, and vanilla. Then, last but not least, we have Macaron Pistache. This is a fruity fragrance with top notes of black currant, pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, and hazelnut, a mid of white peach, raspberry, geranium, jasmine, and peony, and then a base of whipped cream, cotton candy, cedarwood, vanilla, tonka, and cocoa. Just looking at these fragrances surface level, um, I expected them to be more gourmand than what the scent pyramids are implying. This is something I'm definitely interested in trying. The price point is really affordable, $28. It's a cool concept. Urban Outfitters is accessible, so you're easily able to try these out in store, I'm assuming. Uh, so this is something that's definitely a smash. I'm curious about trying these out. Um, I can't, I, I mean, I can't say for certainty whether I'll buy these myself, but this definitely is something cool and interesting, and I think that it's just a fun one to have or a fun new release to have leading into the summertime. All right, so those are all the fragrance releases we're covering today. Uh, let me know if you think any of these releases stands out in particular to you. What do you think of these not new launches? Do you think they're innovative and fun, or do you think some of them are a little bit repetitive? I'm curious to hear your thoughts, but thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you next time. Bye.